Okay guys, time for your language. So go ahead and put everything else away that you're working on. And get out your language notebook. Label it at the top, December 8th. And then also label it unit four test review. Unit four test review. Tomorrow you guys have a test in language over unit four. So I wanted to go over some things that you're gonna be seeing tomorrow. So you're gonna be seeing adjectives on there. What is an adjective? Kara? A word that describes yes, a word that describes something. Give me an example of an adjective. My boat was red. Red, so red being the adjective. Big. Big. Um, my dog was fat. So fat, describing your dog. Fluffy. Fluffy, very nice. Uh, while we're going over this stuff and kind of discussing, guys, I would be taking notes in your language notebook, okay, so you know what to go over for tonight. Uh, what if I said many varieties of horses live on my farm? Many varieties of horses live on my farm. What would be the adjective in that sentence, Max? Many. Many, yeah, telling how many of something. I'm not giving a specific number but many, meaning a lot. Uh, what if I said, the Nacho Supreme, since we're having nachos today for lunch, the Nacho Supreme looks like an enormous meal. What's my adjective? Enormous, enormous. very good. Uh, we're also going to be looking at some articles. What are our articles? Mimi? Articles are stuff that has a bunch of like a book and it has <laughs> nice. You're describing articles like in a magazine? Yeah. That's correct. What about articles in grammar? Oh. Max? There's a lot of information. No. I'm looking for specific words. Nope, I'm looking for three words. Blank, blank, and blank are the articles we use. Like this and that. Nope, close, not this and that. On your iPad, I want you to look up articles. Look up articles. Brooklyn, what are articles? Um, is this a verb being included? Uh, type in articles in grammar. Hannah? An article is any member of a class of dedicated work or use of mind that is used to mark the identifiable ability of the reference. So give me what are the articles that we're going to be looking at. Max? A and the. Yes, A and the. And, and the, write it down in your language notebook now. We were struggling with that, articles. A, and, and the. If you're not sure how to spell articles, you have a wonderful device that you can use as a resource. So try and spell it the best you can and then Google would show you the actual spelling. So sound it out. Type in the best you can to Google, and then it's gonna correct and show you how it should be spelled. Articles, A and and the. Uh, when would you use the article and? Malia? When you are talking about two things or more? Uh, not when you're talking about two or more things. It has to do with letters, Kara. Yes, when the word after it starts with a vowel. So, in your language notebook, I want you to write down these words.
I want you to use A or Anne. Which one would fit in the beginning? These four. A or Anne? In your language notebook. What about monkey? A or Anne? A. A. What about A. eel? A. A. What about pizza? A. A. What about apple? A. A. Very nice. Uh, A here because is this a uh, vowel? No. No, consonant. Uh, Anne, because it's E of L. Yes. Yes. P, was that a vowel? No. No, consonant. Yeah. And A, was that a vowel? Yeah. Yes. So that's when we use our A versus our N. Okay? All right. Also then, I want you to look up when should you use A or the. What's the difference in A or the? Why couldn't I say A monkey versus the monkey? What's going to be the difference there? Looking it up on your iPad. The difference in using A, the article A versus the article the. Brooklyn, what's the difference in using the article A versus the article the? Um, a is used to modify nouns. Bless you. Non or non -particle nouns. So A is used for something non specific? And what about the? The is used to refer to S-I-S-I-S. Mason, help her out. Oh, there she got it. The is used to describe something specific. A is going to be describing something not specific to something. Okay, more general. Good. I hope you're taking notes in your language notebook. All right, then you're going to have this, that, these, and those. If I said... This chair, is it here or over there? Here. here. It's right here, here, right? If I said that chair, is it right here next to me or over somewhere there. else? Over there. Over there. Somewhere over there, okay? This being specific to something I'm holding, something that's by me, okay, something I own, okay? That meaning somebody else's, somewhere farther away, okay? Uh, the plural form then would be these and those. Okay, these chairs, meaning the ones that are close by me, that I own, okay, those chairs, meaning somewhere else, okay, off in the distance, somebody else's, good. Uh, we are going to have words with uh, E-R and E-S-T, write that down in your language notebook, E-R and E-S-T. How would you know when to use for example, if I said, uh, I'm looking at the word pretty, how would I know when to use prettier or prettiest? Prettier or prettiest? How would I know which one to use? Ben? If you're comparing two things, you yes. use EST. Oh, if, if, there you go. If I'm comparing two things, I'm going to be using the ER, okay? So, this is a good one. You guys ready? Yeah. Mrs. Bush is prettier than Mrs. Long. What? <laughs> She's gonna see this. What do you mean she's gonna see this? She's so tell her. In this, in this, in that classroom, we're gonna say, we're gonna just smack and tell her. <laughs> no, I think you would know. All right. Her. When would you use an EST? Raina. You're giving me an example. Tell me when to use it. Give me more of a definition of using EST. So Ben told us ER for comparing two things. Raina? Just, I don't know. 
Megan. Yeah, comparing two or more things. So I could say Mrs. Bush is the prettiest teacher in the whole building. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys disagree with that? No. Okay. Okay. No, I'm okay. The <laughs> All right. Um, listening. Three. Two. Uh, you are going to have to uh, combine a sentence. So if I'm talking about uh, a ride, like a ride at like a fair, you know, like a Ferris wheel, and if I said the Ferris wheel, I rode the Ferris wheel, and then I said that the Ferris wheel was thrilling, okay? So I have kind of two basic simple sentences, and I want to combine those two sentences. How can I combine? I rode the Ferris wheel, the Ferris wheel is thrilling. How could I combine those two sentences? Alyssa? Uh, close. She said, I rode the Ferris wheel and it was thrilling. You can combine them even in a more smooth way. Malia? I rode the, I can't pronounce the word. Thrilling. Thrilling um, uh, Ferris wheel. Good. I rode a thrilling Ferris wheel. So I just add that adjective in front of that noun I was talking about to combine that sentence. Uh, you are going to have um, some proper adjectives on there. So if it's a proper adjective, just like a proper noun, it's going to get what kind of letter? Mimi? Like a, a capital? A capital letter, good. Uh, you're going to have some abbreviations on there. And I'm even going to tell you specifically uh, some abbreviations you're going to have on there. So are you ready taking notes? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I would know how to abbreviate your months. Know how to abbreviate your months. And I would know how to abbreviate um, if you're talking about addresses like streets and roads. Okay. Um, you know that you're going to have to use capital letters sometimes, and some get periods and some don't. So know your months and streets and roads. Which ones have a period and which ones don't? Um, you're going to have some antonyms and synonyms on there. What is an antonym? What is an antonym? Uh, Maverick? Uh, antonym, Maverick is telling us, means opposite of a word. So if I said big, what would be an antonym? Small. 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 Very nice. Um, what about a synonym then? Mason? Yeah, where the means is same. Remember, we can think about synonym and same. Both start with an S. Okay, so if I said um, my word is big, give me a synonym of big. Mimi? Large. Large. Large, huge, good. Um, there's a word on here that it's a good vocab word. It's not a word used very often. And you're going to be using it with synonyms and antonyms. So I want to make sure you know what it is. Make sure you know what the word vast is. V-A-S-T, vast. Um, you can look that up on your iPad now. Yes, vast. V-A-S-T. And I'll even tell you, you're going to be either finding a synonym or an antonym for that word. So it's not a word that's used very often, but definitely one that's a, a good vocab word. You guys could be using it in your writings. It's one of those better uh, fifth grade words to be using. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be your uh, test for tomorrow. There are 18 questions on it, okay? It will be on Schoology. Uh, for tonight, you are going to be finishing your rough draft of your brochure if you did not do that yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, I have lots of friends who are still in the process of gathering their information and research. You are behind, and you're going to be making a lot of work for yourself if you are behind. You need to make sure you are working with us. So last day for your rough draft of your brochure, okay? And then you also have tonight then a daily language. Uh, it's number 10, and I believe there are only five questions on there, okay? So remember your daily language. If you need to look up something, look it up. Don't just guess, all right? Daily language, rough draft of your brochure. Be ready for your test tomorrow.
Uh, any questions for language? Uh, Mimi? Uh, uh, okay. Malia? Do you get to use our notes for the test tomorrow? Oh, do you get to use your notes for the test tomorrow? I'm not sure yet. Uh, we'll see. Reina? So do not turn in the rough draft, right? You are not turning in the rough draft of your brochure. Nope, we're going to keep going through our writing process. Uh, revising, revising and editing before we have our final draft. Sophia? So when you tell you to submit your final draft back, you're saying final draft is going in your brochure. That was our informative, right? This is a brochure we're working on. Oh, but I, I found this in um, language. I know. Our informative right was about two weeks ago that you turned in. Oh. Okay. That was an, an informative right that we did, that you were informing your audience. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Okay. You're good then. Yeah. The travel brochure, I don't have a place to submit that yet. Um, we're probably going to be doing our final draft next week, okay? So we still got to go through our other process steps of um, revising and editing before we work on that final draft, okay? And then we will probably be publishing those. Any other questions for language? All right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have some work time.